All right. All right. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. Welcome to the Sunday evening, uh, a little bit of a test drive. Uh, of course, I'm with IDC Woodcraft. So we're going to do a test drive of a new CNC router bit. And this is like a live demo. I finally got done with the final tests. But first of all, before we even get started, I want to ask for an audio check. I, I'm using my cell phone with the service now, so if you would, type in the comments, yes, I can hear you, and then I will move on. So my awesome camera person here will give me the thumbs up when, when you say, yes, I can hear you. <clears throat> so waiting for the thumbs up. One, two, three. I'm going to check my mic there. Yep, it's picking up. Can you hear me? All right, good, good, good. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. On the Phantom CNC router, we are going to, well, we're doing kind of three tests in one, but I want you to see this because I know it works now. I just did my final demos yesterday, and what I did <clears throat> was, one, I wanted to see how far I could push the Beast CNC router bit that is going to be coming out in about two to three weeks. So I've had to push it back because there's lots of preparation to, for, to get a new router bit out. But this one is an ass-kicking bit. That's why I call it the piece that does better than I thought. I'm also going to show you what the Phantom can do with the beast. And we're trying out something else that um, I had a little bit of an issue. So if you point the camera down here at this board here real quick, this is a big piece of maple beam that I uh, had laying back in the corner of the of the of the building <clears throat> and i figure what better way than to test the beast than on a hardwood like maple and so the problem was holding the beam down to the table at first i was screwing it down but a company a cnc router products company called all-star cnc the uh, the guy that's there his name is alex <clears throat> excuse me my throat's kind of he contacted me and he said, we got this stuff that works for vacuum tables and it's supposed to make your vacuum table a whole lot uh, with a whole lot better hold down. You know, as a CNC router owner and someone who's running projects, the worst thing that can happen to you is a project moves, right? So we can hold a project down with clamps. We can use CA glue with the tape method or we can use the vacuum table. But all three of them can fail, right? They can move the, the, the project. So we have to be sure that we can clamp this stuff down. So I told the guy <clears throat> at, um, at All Star, send me some samples. Let me try it out. And so basically, this is it right here. It's this flexible mat. It's got some holes in it. And what it's supposed to do is cut down on all the leakage areas and uh, by 85%, but it's also supposed to magnify the vacuum dramatically. I was really skeptical about this until I was actually able to hold this piece down and drive the beast through it. So here's, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how this works. And then uh, with the vacuum system, and then we are going to test drive the beast. Now, here is exactly how I'm going to run this thing. So first of all, if you don't know what the beast is, Come on over here. It's a new CNC router bit that I have released. And not, I have not released it yet. It's going to get released to the CNC Insiders first. Now, the CNC Insiders is the uh, email list I have. CNC Insiders get first dibs on anything that I release. And so, um, by the way, I am not reading the comments because I'm typically on the other side of the camera. But right now I'm on the back side. So I can see uh, Michaelis and Tim and Jack. And yep. <clears throat> so this is the beast. It is what they call a roughing bit. It's got a one inch flute length. And you can see it's got some gnarly little teeth there. And those teeth, uh, basically, <laughs> the beast eats wood for breakfast. I realized this after I did this run here, this test run, and we are going to have a sticker with it because a bunch of people were asking me about the sticker. If there was going to be a sticker with the Beast, this is the Beast logo, the CNC bit that eats wood for breakfast. 
and you are going to get yours from IDC Woodcraft. All right. It's still going to be a couple weeks before it's released. Hey, Chris, how you doing? All right, so I should take the camera back. All right, so first of all, let's demo. Let me show you about this um, this vacuum mat here. Uh, oh, I put this here for a reason. I got something else in the mail. Some coffee from Dan. Um, as Dan uh, Pers Persinger, or one of our CNC brothers. So he is the one that sent, he sent a lithograph to me <clears throat> and he carved out a Corian with my new grandson, Nikolai. Amazing, amazing. You saw it, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. So Dan, if you're watching this, thank you for the coffee. I love coffee. I love getting uh, projects in the mail. That's the best way people can say thank you to me. All right. So we are going to set this aside. Uh, what I did is I installed the seal that they sent with it. And now I have put on this mat. This is an adhesive backing. It's, it's a consumable. Um, but if you do it right, you get your spoil board nice and level. It should last you for quite a while. So come on over here and look at this piece of maple. And let me see how we're looking at it. Okay, so I can grab this thing and I can just pick it up. I can slide it around all I want. Now, I'm going to turn on my vacuum system and it's going to get a little noisy. I got to put my microphone really close to my mouth so you can hear me over the noise. Because I want to show you the hold down power with this. Unfortunately, um, well, I'll even do it over here to show you the difference. We'll do it over here first. But I've got to make sure I know where this is at because I'm already positioned. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> So if you look down here for a second, back up, then you can back up, look down here. So I'm closing off zones one and two, which is this zone and that zone. And then I'm going to turn on zone three and four. So zone three and four on, and I am going to fire up the vacuum. Now the vacuum system is right there. And one of the things, coming back up, one of the things when it comes to this vacuum stuff is even with a vacuum system, we can still have project movement, and project movement sucks, right? And so sometimes people think, oh, I got to get a stronger vacuum system. This is supposed to be the solution to that. So right now, I've got zone three and four turned on right now and it's not holding the board because there's too much porosity underneath this board it is it is a machine and i'll show you that the vacuum does work so i'm going to grab just this piece of whatever it is and if I set it down on the vacuum table, you can't pull up on an item with it that's on a vacuum. It'll come right up. So I have to kind of pull sideways. But you can see it's, it's definitely holding. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay, so it does hold. Um, I don't want to do that. So my piece of maple was not holding over here. So I'm going to dust that dust off real quick. I'm going to put my little broom. We're going to take this piece of maple. I'm going to position it right back where I was because I am zeroed out already. I'm just going to let it, uh, I'm going to turn the valves on. So now I have zones one and two turned on and three and four turned off. Oh, let's get that back. There we go. I'm starting to draw in now. 
<laughs> That's so we got a five pound sledge, right? And it's uh, you know, so that's holding really well. Um, what's good about a vacuum system on your CNC router is you don't have to fiddle with clamps, you don't have to fiddle with CA glue, right? You position your project down, you let that vacuum hold your part, and you rock and roll. So that's the first thing. This next is we are going to run the beast. Now, before we do that, I'm going to get behind the camera because I'd like to see some of the comments that are coming through. Uh, so Chris and uh, Miguel, and the, I think. Oh, my eyes just aren't good enough. Um. Ask them how to get the beast. So the beast is not available yet. The hog is the one that you have received. Well, well what's it say? Uh oh. There we go. All right. Okay, we're still alive. There we go. So, okay, so the beast is not what you have received. <laughs> the hog is what has been on the market. Right, it's the same, it's a roughing bit. Uh, I redesigned and made it a different roughing bit for the beast for much more aggressive work. So, if you come over here for a second, we just come down on these two. This is the hog right there, and this is the beast. So they don't look a whole lot different, but they perform dramatically different. The hog is a little longer, so that's uh, one of the things. But what we're going to do is we are going to fire up the beast, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it at 1,000 inches per minute in two separate runs. The first run is going to come back and forth on this board and just start chewing material away. This bit eats wood for breakfast, okay? And it's going to choose material away at 1,000 inches per minute. It's going to do it at a full depth of cut, which is one inch. So 1,000 inches per minute, one inch depth of cut, 80% step over. My whole machine is going to get messy. I've had it. I have to leave my brush, uh, my my dust boot off, so you can see it. The second one is I'm going to create a pocket here uh, that's going to be one inch deep, and uh, it's going to be an offset. But it's going to start in the middle, and the reason I want to do that is so you can see not just the cross grain cut, but the cut along the grain as well. So I'm going to move this stuff out of the way because this is going to get a little messy. We're going to make sure everything's sitting nice and tight. Yep. It's kind of cool when you can take a hammer and you can't move the project. <laughs> Not just a hammer, a sledge. Okay. So I'm going to get my safety glasses on. My headset on. And we're going to fire up the first program now. I may have to stop it because I did not test run this program. Or I have to stop it, then that's because it's not doing what I was supposed to do. All right, so come on over here. And we are just going to run. So I am going to hit the start button. We're turning at uh, 24,000 RPMs on this. So the program has just started up. I'll take the camera. So the hog is coming up to speed, or the, the beast is coming up to speed. There we go. One inch. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's one more for this per minute. Run in, stretch the cut. On a good word, this is the vision that the word is there. I've been trying to get this bit to get to a point where I can break it. So the phantom is running at 1,000 per minute. It doesn't know that it's there. It's running at 1,000 per minute. One inch deep. It affects check overs. And it doesn't know the word is there. So it's the one chip that we're breaking out of. This piece looks quick. Alright, I'll let you take a look at the piss on the top. Look at this pile of salt that's on it. So, these are the chips that it's cranking out right now. And there's the bit to get it so you see the light. Doesn't even know that it was touching wood. So what I'm going to do now is set up the second, uh, the second program. So if we'll hold the camera again. Come on over here. So on the Phantom, we have the HD 100 controller. So with home-based CNC routers, you'll have the, uh, the controller on your screen. You can see things. The Phantom, this machine here, is a production-based machine. But you can, you can run your projects. I ran, let me show you, a really cool project that I ran. Three D flag of a woman holding a flag. I want to do this project full size on the Phantom. Okay, so I'm going to load up the second program. Come on over here. So the way we run this HD controller is we hit File, the button right there, and it's asking several options. Well, we want the first option, load a file. Sorry, I'm not reading comments right now, um, but I will get back to them in a minute. So we're on load file, so we say OK. And then it's asking um, internal or external. I want it on the USB drive right here. So we are going to toggle down using the down arrow button. And then we'll hit the OK button. And now it's looking at the flash drive. And I'm going to go to the second program. And I'm going to hit OK. And that's going to load that program. And now we're going to just hit the, uh, the run button, which is right here. That's also a pause button, so if you need to stop the thing mid-cycle. So I'm going to hit that. And now we just hit the OK button right there. And we're going to run this pocket profile in the camera over here. Uh, that pocket profile is going to be back back in there, okay, back where we haven't cut yet. And it's going to be one inch deep. Again, we run it 1,000 inches per minute. And it's going to do an offset pocket that's 8 inches by 10 inches. Let's see how fast this can go. If somebody would get their timer out and, and get ready to watch this. I have no idea how it's going to work like this because I haven't tried it quite like that yet. So here we go. I'm going to hit the run button. And the spindle's coming up to speed now. We are plunging at 80 inches per minute. It's coming into position. This is full depth of the, of the flute. What a 
This is a beast. It's not a grip. That would be made of the in a second. Wait, what? I'll tell you the fact in just a minute. I'm dangerously pissed with the tree. We're going to see finish with this top, but all that force is being applied against the board here. I don't even know what the board is, and this board is still holding nice and strong. That's it. You said a piece of paper that I just to make sure you didn't flip that with it. That fucking piece of paper. These are all just not those pieces off. Now, I'm going to turn my vacuum off. Ah. Shut up. And just give me a second here. Okay. Just making sure we're still on. I'm doing this with my phone. And I keep hitting buttons on the phone. I'll I'll make I'll tell you about the bit and how we can get to it. Um so first of all, the bit will be available to CNC insiders first. And that's the email list that I have. <clears throat> Anytime I have a new product, people who are on the CNC Insiders, they get uh, first dibs on everything. I had a 3 sixteenths compression bit. They ran me out of stock before I could even release it to the public. And uh, I just got those back in. And so I've told the insiders they're back because there was another 1,500, 2,000 people that were had clicked on that bit. And that's only from the CNC Insiders. So this you're holding a little crooked. So there we go. So if you're not on the CNC Insiders list, do a search on Google, type in CNC Insiders, and you'll find it. You click that, sign up to the list. The thing with the Insiders, when I do a first release, I give 15% off of the bits, right? So they have that opportunity. But at the end of the day, so that's the deal with the bit. Um, come on down. I'm going to just show for a second. The router bit is still in fine shape. And it's not warm at all. So that's a quarter inch, quarter inch shank. I will come out with larger ones. I'm going to move this thing back so we can take a look at that pocket. So the type, this type of bit is not meant to create a pretty finish. <clears throat> it's meant for when you're making bowls or doing uh, a lot of material removal. You want to spare your your finish, finishing bits. And by finishing bits, let's go over to my, my uh, little bin here. All right, so this is a quarter-inch down cut. Nice, you know, it's got the straight bits all the way down, uh, well, a spiral. But that's going to have a nice clean cut all the way down. But if you're hogging out material with this, you're not only wearing it down, you can't run it nearly as fast. That's the intention of a roughing bit is to cut down that time. And so many people have already done that. And it really kills their time way down with a hog. Now you get the beast coming out and then you just leave a little bit on the edge of your cut. Like maybe a, an 05 on the edge of your cut. That's actually the finish. I can't get the camera to zoom in. There you go. But you can see it leaves little ridges there. Um, and you just leave like an 05. And, um, and then you come back in with that, with that uh, finishing bit, your standard up cut or down cut or compression bit, and just do a nice clean pass. When you do it that way, you use a bit like this, the hogging bit, those bits last forever because you're not putting near the work on them. So that's why we put roughing bits into our arsenal. Now, remember, this is a phantom. This is industrial level machine. On something like your, your bench tops, we have to come down to maybe 80 to 100 inches per minute because the machines just can't be as aggressive as something like this. So... 
Um, I'm going to try to read some of these comments. Uh, you guys have been talking to each other. Jeff, can the long mill with the Makita router withstand that much torque? So Jack, Jack said no, right? And he's right. Uh, it's not intended. The machines, the long mill right there, which is a bit of a mess right now. It can't handle that. The, the spindle itself just can't handle that much work. But the the bits do work in this. You will still save a ton of time using it in your long mill, and you'll spare your bits at the same time, your finishing bits. Um, Chris, if my machine uh, cannot do such fast passes, what would the proper um, 100 inches per minute, right? You, you start at 80 to 100 inches per minute. Uh, popped your thing up there. I'm gonna take it back off, and then even even with my glasses, my reading glasses, still a little hard to read. I got another pair of reading glasses around somewhere. Let me see if we can find them. They're either like over here or over there. Maybe in my computer bag up there. I don't know, but I'm gonna work on it. One thirty-five from the time. One, okay. Uh, one minute, 25 seconds, one minute, 20, 35 seconds to pocket that thing out at one inch deep. Okay. So imagine the kind of time you're going to save, even if you go to half inch deep, let's say you're doing a long mill and you go to half inch or three quarters of an inch, right? And you're aggressively going at a hundred inches per minute, which this can handle. You're going to cut your time way, way, way down. Um, what else we have? And yeah, this is wild. <laughs> so anyway, um, Tosh, will you come back? Thank you. My camera person's awesome. All right. So anyway, so at the end of the day, first of all, Dan, who sent me the coffee. Thank you. Uh, this was a live demo uh, to show you what the beast can do. I've been talking about it, but nobody's really seen it. Now you've seen it and why I have been talking about it, why I call the thing the beast, right? So also the phantom, now you know what the phantom can do. So if you have long running projects, you have a lot more, um, a lot faster machine, right? And of course, it depends on your floor space, your budget and things like that. Phantom, I, I chose after doing some research, one, because of the price as I was upgrading from from the bobs that I started out with to the long mill and using the phantom, <clears throat> you know, uh, the price I talked to the owner and you know me, I'm an entrepreneur. I have IDC Woodcraft, a CNC router bit business. And as an entrepreneur, one of our jobs or responsibility that many business owners don't take into account is the sense of responsibility that they have to their customers, right? There are many businesses are out, you know, the numbers, right? Give me the numbers, the sales, the numbers where he had the same, he embodies the same thing that I embrace, which is there's a person on the other side trying to accomplish something, trying to um, find new purpose or meaning or something they want to get out of nine to five, or if you've retired and you're, 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 um, you're like, I got to have something to do, right? You're tired of sitting at the TV, wearing uh, putting a rut in the couch or whatever it is, something for you. CNC router is an awesome way of doing that. <clears throat> so uh, at the end of the day, Steve, the, you know, one of the owners at Phantom, uh, I really liked him. We talked a lot and, and then I went down and I saw the machines and I liked them price wise and all that. So that's why I, um, I recommend the Phantom as, as a next level machine for you. The other thing is the padding. Come on up here. I was thinking mess here is this padding, uh, this vacuum mat from all star. So this stuff is, it's very thin. Right, and it's uh, you don't use that until you resurface your spoil board and you put the seal in underneath, and then you put that down. I was actually floored that that could hold this beam down as well as it's been able to hold it down. So All Star CNC, I will uh, get links for you, and I'll put them in the description of the videos. 
Um, when I talked to All Star, they actually contacted me. I think I already said this in the beginning. Uh, first of all, this video was just a live demo of the Beast, the Phantom, and um, I was quite pleased with this vacuum mat. So, but All Star had contacted me at the right time because I was trying to figure out how to hold this down. I wasn't having a lot of luck with the vacuum system. So, that's really what this is about. Um, if you're on YouTube, there's a a, a, you know the thumbs button down below if you just take a second to hit that of course comments um more questions i'll be happy to answer them as for people who have watched this video later i'm going to look at the live comments here again in just a moment before i check out and uh, i can't think of anything else the beast is going to be released to the cnc insiders list first and that'll be in about two weeks it keeps getting bumped back a bit but I'm, I'm seeing it at two weeks at this point and the cnc insiders will get the they will have a 15 percent discount right that's just what they get when there's a new release and then i release it to the public public doesn't get that so if you're not on the cnc insiders list you want this bit and you want the discount sign up to the list look do a search on google i'll try to remember to put a link in the description of this video um and that's kind of it right um yeah and i got to spend a, a sunday evening with you and with my friend here who's holding the camera which is very cool and working on another video actually that video is talking th about this mat in more detail the vacuum mat so that's where we're at um, let me check some of these comments and then we're going to check out again we just did a test run of the beast the bit that's going to be released it did a one inch depth of cut at a thousand inches per minute that's that bit right there 80 percent step over on maple cross cut and then it did the uh with the grain in a pocket and you can see it's much more chewed up along the grain but that doesn't matter because you're going to leave material along the edge let's take a look at these comments here hey there's kate what's going on sister can't wait to do our live again on wednesday so this you're right uh it is better than the hog <laughs> that's why it's called the beast right and it is uh it as you've seen it eats wood for breakfast and so that is its tagline its logo um we also got machine with the finishing bit is slower no what's the difference oh really good question so let me pop this question on the screen and so the question is uh, is the finishing bit slower? What's the difference? <clears throat> okay, here, take the camera again. And I'm going to get this and let me get a beast out. Um, there we go. And so the beast is, you, you've, you've seen it. Now I'm going to hold up the camera. Can you, can you, here, let me get a little white. Can you see the ridges on it? In the, in the lens there, in the camera? Okay. So the beast is what they call a hogging bit. It's a roughing bit. And it's designed to just do hard work. And it's not designed to do pretty work. It's there for speed. It's there to spare your other router bits, which would be your standard up bit or down bit. So this is a standard, if it's out of focus and okay you're good so you can see this is you're going to be your standard bit this is a quarter inch down cutting bit and the difference between the two is the beast or roughing bits have an interrupted cut and so what it's doing is breaking off little tiny pieces of wood at the, instead of shearing a long a long strip away so this long blade here is intended not good light but i apologize this long blade will give you a nice clean cut along your thing uh whereas this it, it just it just chews the wood it eats wood it eats wood for breakfast that's why we call it the beast so you run those fast your finish bit which is the standard cnc router bits that you normally use 
you will you will normally run them slower. You'll run them at the suggested feeds and speeds that on the IDC Woodcraft CNC router bit app that's out there. If you don't have the CNC router bit app from IDC Woodcraft, get it. It's the only CNC router bit app that has all your feeds and speeds and router bit information right there. Some people said, why would I need that? And then they get back to me and they say, I've used this every time I've set up a project. So it's got the data for all the CNC router bits that IDC would craft, right? And so it'll have your feeds and speeds for your finishing bits. I hope I described the difference, why I'm calling this one a finishing bit. It just leaves a cleaner finish. The finishing bit is the bit that you normally use, that you've normally used. The beast is a roughing bit. This one, I had the, I designed it, and I had the design modified with a really thick core in the middle, in the middle of the bit, so it could withstand a lot of force. And we have just seen that it really, really can. So I hope that comment, I hope that explained to you what the difference is. And we'll look at a couple more comments, and we're going to knock off. Okay, I got a smiley face, so uh, I guess, guess you got it. Uh, oh, the the uh, IDC Woodcraft app is free. Just it's for app. It's Apple and Android. You can get it for both. I can't show you because I'm using my phone right now. <laughs> um, be sure to hit the like button. Yes, thank you, Kate. All right, my CNC brothers and sisters, come on over here. Um, I want to tell you, just hit that little end button, and then you might have to hit a second end button on there. Um, so my CNC brothers and sisters, there you go. You've seen what this new bit can do. Get on the CNC insiders list if you want first dibs at it. I expect to be sold out of those in no time flat. I have a thousand on hand, right? I've got them in stock, right? But they're not released until everything's in line, the website, all the things that go with it. Because you know me, I send things with, with your packages. When you buy M&Ms, you get a bit with it. How's that? <laughs> All right. I'm going to bid everyone adieu. Thank you for dropping by, seeing what the badass bit can do, uh, the, the beast. And now you've seen a couple other things, what the phantom can do. You see this mat. So I've actually accomplished three different things here. I was able to hold a project down, make sure my phantom could run what it did, and actually use some new vacuum mat that I didn't even know existed. All right. So with that, you can hit the end button. I'll see you all later. Yeah. <laughs>